We show the gases. They're small. They move rapidly in straight lines. The size of the gas is normally thought of to be small compared to the size of the container. Like when we only had a few people in our, in our container, you didn't take up much space, right? So you didn't bump into each other very often, okay? Now when the container gets smaller and smaller, that kind of breaks down a little bit and gases don't behave like gases anymore, okay? They have a kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is what? Motion, okay? That kinetic energy is related to temperature. As I heat you up, you move faster. And therefore, you do what? Bump into things more often. Increase the pressure. So we already talked about the four things here. So the volume of a gas. This is probably the simplest one, right? How much space do you take up the gas that you have? And when we talk about containers, we're talking about sealed containers. Anybody have any sealed containers of gas? You only need sealed containers of gas? Um, like Pam? What? You know, there's a, gra um, a gas where it's like butter, and it's in a can, and you spray it, and it comes out butter, and you the pan, so you don't have to... The oil. The oil. The oil. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how they do that. Uh, that's not a gas, though. Uh -huh. It's liquid, and it's injected with gas. I'm thinking about more something that's all a gas. Like hairspray? That's actually not even all a gas there either. Oh. What about your tires on your car? Oh, yeah. Is that a container full of gas? What kind of gas you got in there? You got air in there, don't you? You got nitrogen and oxygen mostly. That's what's in there, okay? So you all have some container of gas, right? Okay. And it's sealed up, right? Gas can't get out, can't get in. Okay, that's what we're talking about when we talk about containers and volume, is how big that container is that's sealed. Okay, temperature of a gas. As we said, it's related to the average kinetic energy. Now, when we talk about temperature of gases in this class, it will always, always, always have to be done. Any calculations that we're going to do with temperature have to be done in Kelvin. Okay. See what everybody remember how to calculate Kelvin temperature? Yes. Uh -huh. Celsius plus two hundred and seventy three. Yep. Celsius plus two hundred and seventy three. Right. So zero Kelvin is minus two hundred and seventy three Celsius. Okay. That's one way to remember. It. Okay. And we showed this. When you guys are moving slow, fewer collisions, lower temperature. As I increase your temperature, you had higher pressure. We're going to talk about this more later. Anybody in here have a, um, a newish kind of car that has like pressure sensors on your tires? Yeah. I just have been driving with the um, We had a Toyota at one point that had those things on there. And the sensor would always go off in the wintertime. Why does the sensor go off in the wintertime? Because the molecules are cold. Mm -hmm. They're not moving so fast. So the pressure does what? It goes down, right? Okay. It's always on the spare tire, too. Never on the four on the car. Also, when are you supposed to measure tire pressure? Anyone know? On your car, when are you supposed when to measure? Cold. When they're cold. Absolutely. Because your pressure in your tires changes when you drive because the tires heat up from the friction on the road. Okay? You're always supposed to measure tire pressure when you're cold. And I know why. Kinetic energy increases pressure. Okay. Pressure. What is pressure? Who in here has ever measured pressure before? PSI, mm -hmm. where do you measure PSI? <laughs> on your tires, right? Or if you work <laughs> on in, your bike. on your bike, or if you work in a place that had, does like anesthesia and stuff, if you work, or some of you might work in a vet's office or something. I know over in our vet clinic over here, they have compressed gas cylinders for oxygen, right? Mm -hmm. Or for anesthesia sometimes too, right? Because it's a gas. Okay. 
I don't think they have gas in CNC's. I think they're just all lines. And those will have gauges on them that tells you exactly how much pressure is in that cylinder. Okay. Oxygen tanks. Oxygen tanks, yeah. Um, the ones that you just carry around people, they don't normally have very good gauges on them, though, do they? They're just like. No, we have. They do? Yeah. I don't know. I have never been on oxygen before. So. The problem with pressure is that there's lots of different units for pressure. Look up here, they list four different units for pressure up here. Yeah, millimeters of mercury or tor. Millimeters of mercury or tor is the same. Atmospheres, pascals, kilopascals, pounds per square inch. We're going to use these two mostly. We won't use these two very often. Okay. Atmosphere and atmospheres and millimeters of mercury or tor. Millimeters of mercury and tor is the same thing. Okay. Now atmospheres is useful because look at this picture right here. See this guy standing on the earth and has atmospheric pressure pushing down on his head. You feel it? You feel atmospheric pressure pushing down on you? Why not? It's doing it. You have a big column of air sitting on top of your head pushing down on you. No? You do. Why don't you feel it? You're used to it. Been that way since you was born, since you were birthed, right? And it's pushing on you all around. Okay? Now, this atmospheric pressure changes, doesn't it? Anybody watch the news? Watch the weather? They give atmospheric pressure. They normally give atmospheric pressure in inches of mercury as opposed to millimeters of mercury. Okay? And when atmospheric pressure changes, what happens? Storms normally, when there's dramatic changes in atmospheric pressure. Real low pressure systems are known as what? Anybody know what a low pressure system is called? When it gets really intense? Hurricane or tornado? Those are both examples of low pressure systems. Because the pressure is, there's, it's, the air is rising, so the pressure is really low. Okay? So, how do we measure atmospheric pressure? We have something called a barometer. And some people may have one of these in their house. I doubt you have one with mercury in it, but I'll explain to you how you have one another way. When I was a student, like back in my undergrad days, so before most of y'all were born, I said most, not everybody, Angie. So who in here was born in the 90s? Yeah. I mean, my undergrad days were 84 to 88, okay? We all babies. Bunch of babies, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, at least I had, I mean, I'm still in school, high school, middle school. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, makes me feel older every year, right? Before long, I'll be asking who was born in the 2000s, right? <laughs> <laughs> So look, we used to have one of these in the lab everywhere because some reactions are dependent upon pressure. And how does this work? This is a sealed glass, small glass tube, and it has mercury in it with no air in it. And so this mercury is trying to push down here, right? But it can't come out of this tube, why not? Because there's atmospheric pressure pushing on this pool of mercury here. So depending upon what the atmospheric pressure is determines whether this comes up or down in this tube. As atmospheric pressure goes down, this tube will, this tube will drop down further. As atmospheric pressure gets greater, it pushes more mercury into this tube. Anybody have anything kind of like that at home? What do you have at home that's like that? We have a barometer. You actually have a barometer? Yeah. I'm thinking even more common than that. Let me see if I can draw a picture of it. It is. Hold on, I 
Ini 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 Oh, it's a warm for the dogs. It sure is, isn't it? <laughs> I have one of those. Yeah, because I drink like a gallon a day. Very good. <laughs> Looks like a spider. I need some juice. Looks like a spider. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I'm missing the heart. Well, let's see if I can make my cat better. Oh, that was a cat. <laughs> Upside down oh, triangle. Yeah. Oh, it should be upside down. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I can't make his nose right now. Um, I raised half his head. There. So when Spike wants some water, Spike, Spike, cat. Look at a tough cat. <laughs> Little floofy cats. <laughs> Wimpy old cats. No, my cat's tough. I don't have a cat, but if I did, what happens? He drinks some water, doesn't he? So there's less pressure over here and more pressure in here. So what happens? Water comes out. Now, believe it or not, you can't really tell because it's hard to see it on most water bowls like this, but there's atmospheric pressure. Why doesn't all this water drain out right here? Somebody in my other class asked me this like two weeks ago, and I said, when we talk about gases, we'll show you why. Why doesn't all this water come out right here? Huh? Because of pressure. Atmospheric pressure is pushing down right here. Even though this water is pushing down, atmospheric pressure is pushing down on the bowl, right? On the water in the bowl, right? It keeps all this water from just pouring out at one time. It's a doggy bowl, a doggy water, or a cat water, right? <laughs> this class is important. You don't know stuff like this. So, like, when somebody asks you, why does all that water just pour out? You go, well, let me draw you a picture. <laughs> <laughs> the spike. The spike. The spike. <laughs> and the pressure, atmospheric pressure pushing down. That's actually all you'd have to show them is, look, right here in the bowl, the air is pushing down on it, and it has the same force is this water pushing down right here, right? Make sense? Okay. So that basically really is a barometer. It changes the level of water in here, believe it or not, it does change slightly with, with weather events. It's not enough where you can really see it, but it does change slightly. Isn't that cool? You can impress all your friends with that. So <laughs> I like when I can explain everyday phenomena. You probably wonder why the water never ran out, didn't you? You just didn't care. You just like it works. Dog drinks too much water anyway. He does. He's got to like fill up ten times a day. I think you need to get a bigger one. Yeah, you need a bigger water. No, I So what is atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure is the pressure of the air above you pushing down. Okay? And this changes depending upon where you're at. You see, they point to, the, if you're at the ocean, it's at about one atmosphere. If you go to the mountains, it's a lot less, right? This must be like Mount McKinley or something in Alaska or something. Snow up there and stuff, right? Sea level, atmosphere pressure is about one. The higher you up you go in the mountains, the less there's pressure. Why? Why is there less pressure up in the mountains? Do it? It's all at the bottom. No, there's still air above you. It's not all down there. There's this, right? Because it's just like saying, all right, here's here's the air, and if you're standing here. Person versus a person standing up here, right? This guy has all this air on top of him. This guy only has this much air on top of him, right? He has a lot less air on top of him than this guy does. So the pressure is less. We're going to talk about how that impacts your breathing in a little while. And your ears change. Your ears pop and all kinds of weird stuff, right? And you have trouble breathing. Yeah. Yep. Now, with all these units of pressure, 
There's only one that you really have to know. One atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury. The rest of these, if they're in the homework, you can look them up in the book or if they're on the test, I'll give them to you. I would like you to know this one. That one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay? And we're not going to do a whole bunch of conversions with those. If we do any, you guys can look them up. You should be good at doing conversions by now. 